Hello, I'm Carl Harvon Mogul, and with me here is Zach Gala Finakis, right? We're here on uh, Between Two Trees. Now, this is Neil Carter, uh, the president of Okanagan Specialty Fruits. That's right. Hello, welcome. Thank you, Carl. Nice to be with you again today. Yeah, so we met and talked, uh, maybe it was, I think, four years ago at uh, the uh, Chicago Bio Convention. That's right. Yeah, and uh, early on when we were getting to learn about the Arctic apple, and now we're here in San Francisco at the uh, Sin Bio Beta Conference and a nice windy fall evening. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. uh, so tell us what has changed in the last few years? Where are the Arctic apples at? What's going on well, with them? Yeah, the, we've made good progress in mm -hmm. moving our Arctic apples uh, forward. I think we met in those days, we were still uh, na navigating the regulatory process. And uh, at that point, we completed that in 2015, both the USDA, FDA, uh, Canadian Food Inspection Agency, and Health Canada. So we have an Arctic Granny and Arctic Golden that are now mm -hmm. fully deregulated. Uh, and um, we've been planting Arctic orchards, growing trees and nurseries and getting these planted out. And we now have about 250 acres of Arctic apple trees planted um, in our own orchards. And we're right now in the midst of preparing for our commercial launch. Uh -huh. So that's uh, very exciting to us. A little bit uh, scary at the same time. There's mm -hmm. lots of lots of things to figure out. Uh, I think as you, the big thing that happened is we got bought by Intrexon mm -hmm. uh, Corporation in April of 2015. And with that uh, acquisition, they decided that we should be a vertically integrated company. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, before we were really a research company developing new apple germplasm, developing Arctic apples, uh, the apple that doesn't get enzymatic browning. But uh, now, now we're, you know, not just developing the germplasm, but growing the fruit, uh, uh -huh. slicing the fruit, doing the value added component and bringing it to the store. So mm -hmm. that's a, you know, a long way for a company to, to build capacity. Mm -hmm. We're still a very small company. We are. Uh, a company of uh, I think uh, 18 people, so that's a, a big step. So for behemoth. Company. Yes, yeah, we're massive. <laughs> we're massive. Uh, so you know we're excited where we're at, and uh, our commercial launch is around the corner. You did a market study earlier this year. Mm -hmm. You wanted to see how did consumers in stores uh, react to? How do they feel about a non-browning, genetically engineered Arctic apple? So how did that go? Well, and this wasn't the first time. This is really um, a uh, consumer, some consumer research that was the sixth round of consumer research over uh -huh. ten, 10 years. And it's been absolutely remarkable how consistent the data has been, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, data we collected from focus groups or web-based surveys or installs, in-store mm -hmm. intercepts or mall intercepts or someplace, you know, where we're presenting the apple. Um, remarkably positive. Mm -hmm. and consistent data throughout all these different, whether it's San Francisco or Chicago or, mm -hmm. or Cincinnati. So, Wait, you, are you trying to tell me that people don't want their apples to brown before they eat them? Well, you know, <laughs> they, but how they responded to the biotech questions mm -hmm. and generally, yes, yes, and people like, people get excited about a non browning apple. Mm -hmm. To be honest, in fact, when you have the apple there to present and you slice it and the people are able to eat that apple, um, it creates excitement. It creates excitement. Mm. People um, definitely identify with the negatives around an apple going brown. Uh -huh. You know the, the yuck factor, as we call yeah. it, very technical term. And uh, and you know they if they get the opportunity to have an apple that doesn't go brown, they think that's a good idea. So you call it the yuck factor up there. I think we call it the ick factor ick. in the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, or maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. I, Same we, thing. We've got a lot of staff who are Americans, and they seem to call it yuck also. So. Oh, okay. Well, Yucky. yuck and ick. Uh, I think there might be synonyms. But if <laughs> if yuck is what you publish the paper with, then then it's got to be yuck. But uh, so. Uh, but, you know, biotech also has its own uh, yuck factor, you know, the idea of, oh, I'm, there's a gene in there, there's something different with the DNA that I'm not familiar with. And so you found that even knowing that, people were okay with that. Because the, yeah, the yuck factor I, I of the brown apple was stronger. Well, we, yeah, absolutely. We're convinced that in, um, you know, given the opportunity for, to have a non-browning apple, 
and have it not go brown, uh, it's you know enough to overcome a lot of the hesitancy. Mm -hmm. But we also found is that you know with most folks, it's the lack of education as to what biotech is, mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that you know with just a small around about a, amount of education around the product, talking just as simply as saying that we use the apple's own genes to turn off the browning gene in an Arctic apple, mm -hmm. you know they all kind of think. Hmm. Well, that's not, you know, that's not too scary. Uh, they can, mm -hmm. they can understand yeah. that. You know, it went. Uh, in fact, we couldn't have dreamt up better results. To be honest, uh, it, mm. we just, um, you know, more than ninety percent of the consumers uh, studied, you know, participated in the study, were, um, you know, their likelihood to to buy, and to, you know, enjoy the texture, the the flavor, the composition and the appearance of an Arctic apple and all, it was, it was, you know, basically consumer res positive results over 90%, which is somewhat unheard of in consumer research today. And, and you know, the interesting thing too is that the 10% or around 10% that weren't as, as positive on it, it was often because, well, I only like red apples. It wasn't mm -hmm. that it was a GM apple. It was, their preference was to eat apples dipped in chocolate and we didn't have any chocolate dip, you mm -hmm. know, and that sort of thing. It was, it was other, issues dealing around their preference around eating apples. Mm -hmm. In the survey, very few people, I think it was a two if I remember right, uh, that weren't willing to participate because mm -hmm. it was a GM apple. This fall, you're starting to introduce these into stores. So where can people find them? How can they find out? Uh, what form will they be able to find them in? Are there going to be whole apples and sliced, just sliced? What okay, a, let's, let's what does start it look with like? the form first. Sure, um, yeah. You know, we're, we're going to do our commercial launch with the 10-ounce uh, uh, pouch bag or grab-and-go convenience bag. Mm -hmm. So this is a bag that has a Ziploc in it, uh, has about 25 slices, mm -hmm. and is suited for the uh, soccer mom, the, um, you know, the, the couple who want to have share sliced apples after lunch someday, mm -hmm. or the person at work wants to graze on apple slices all afternoon. But to answer the when question, uh, mm -hmm. our, our plan is to do our commercial launch starting in early November mm -hmm. and have uh, in-store presence for 12 to 14 weeks. Uh -huh. So that takes us into, um, let's call it early to mid-February. Um, mm. the, where, the where is a little more difficult. We are working with a number of distributors. Um, these distributors represent a, a range of different retailers. Mm -hmm. And retailers, of course, have a multitude of different stores mm -hmm. and store locations. And so once we've um, put it in the hands of the distributor, the distributors and retailers kind of take control over where it goes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we don't actually know the specific stores at this point. Uh, by, by the time we start shipping product, the distributors will be getting a clear idea where it'll be, but for for now, you know, there's um, a focus is around. Uh, it'll be, or between three or four hundred, three to four hundred stores, uh, largely in the in the Midwest, continuing through the Southeast, but also including some the, some in Southern California. So uh, I can't give you more details on that. We we will be sharing some of that information on our website as we as we get it. Okay. Yeah, I think there uh, might be some uh, some social media activity when it happens because uh, sure I know we'll there are people that. who are searching for this kind of stuff. I get questions all the time. Mm -hmm. Somebody hears that hears that I've uh, I've tried an Arctic apple. They're like, well, well, where, where, where can where, I get where? them? You know. <laughs> no, we're getting that. You know, and, and it's really pretty cool for us. It's a, been a 21 year journey for my wife and myself, mm -hmm. and uh, for our research manager, it's been 18 years, and uh, um, you know we're pretty excited about getting these into the stores and we too want to know where they're going to be so we can mm -hmm. go find them and but you know I think it's going to create some excitement I think we're going to find people on social media who say I've got Arctic and you know they'll post that and we'll be interested to see what happens then. So you've got the uh, Golden Delicious Apple mm -hmm. and you've got the Granny Smith and then uh, Fuji mm -hmm. uh, then uh, what other apple varieties are you working on do you have in development are you thinking about? Yes, you know, we have a, a program around more Arctics, more Arctic apples in particular, and uh, so the next one will be Gala. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of getting a non-browning Gala. Gala is really the, the biggest, I think this year it'll become the biggest, most consumed apple mm -hmm. in North America. And uh, so not having a Gala is something, you know, that uh, we're missing out of mm -hmm. our portfolio, and we're working hard to get that. It's We have it in the field now, and uh, continue to collect data from it, and we'll pursue the regulatory path with that when we have the data completed. And mm -hmm. um, 
We also brought uh, Honeycrisp into our program. Mm. Uh, Honeycrisp and Arctic honey, as we envision, uh, will be something really interesting. It's a popular variety. It has a lot of internal browning issues, uh -huh. some related to PPO, some related to other other contributors. But mm -hmm. so we're we're going to be really interested to see how that product works. And mm. uh, and you know, Honeycrisp also does browns very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you know, I think that that it'll also lend itself to uh, you know a fresh cut apple Honeycrisp slice, which will be an attractive, uh, you know, con and convenient, healthy snack. Plus, so, I've, I've seen a lot of Honeycrisp uh, being juiced and turned into cider, mm -hmm. and, and that's been showing up in stores a lot. And, you know, so uh, the Arctic uh, uh, Honeycrisp juice might then be lighter in color. Well, absolutely. And, <laughs> uh, you know, there's a whole slew of things that Arctic apples be used for, and I, I don't even pretend to think that our company is going to be at the front end of all of it, mm -hmm. because uh, having enzymatic browning turned off in Arctic apples lends themselves to a lot of different uses, and the juice being one, you know, nowadays we eat, uh, we drink, I mean, uh, apple juice, and it's a brown pigment, and we think that that's what apple juice is really like, but in fact, no, that's after mm -hmm. the... PPOs react with the substrates and draw out the brown, brown pigment. And uh, a true apple juice is when you bite into the apple and you suck on it, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, and that's the real flavor. So, you know, yeah. what, we, what we treat as apple juice is really, um, you know, an inferior product as to, to what you'd get if you didn't have polyphenol oxidase. And so, Arctic juices are clear, variety specific. Uh, granny juice is a beautiful green color. Uh, it's, hmm. it's, so we're really looking forward to sharing those with people. And, and they, you know, it's not just ciders, but opalescent fresh juices and squeezes and smoothies and all sorts of things. You're teasing me about the Granny Smith. <laughs> it's one of my favorite apples. <laughs> yeah, Arctic Granny, Arctic Granny is a beautiful apple because it's white flesh, you know, and mm -hmm. so the browning shows very rapidly. I, I really it. like the, the tartness and like making like a caramel apple just the the combination of that that sweetness from the caramel and then the tartness from the the, well, the granny smith is as uh, i've shared with yeah. you uh, we're one year behind with the, yeah. with the granny in terms of the golden <laughs> so next year we actually have more grannies in the ground than goldens mm -hmm. uh, we we know that from a sliced uh, apple uh, grannies will be very popular mm. and uh, so we're you know we're busy planting those so you can look forward next year getting some Ooh, awesome so uh We've gotten a couple of questions from people uh, online uh, before this interview. And uh, the first one is, whenever we talk about like non-browning fruits, avocados keep coming up. And, uh, you know, obviously avocados don't grow way up there in uh, Summerland in British Columbia. No, they don't. But, uh, you know, uh, is there anything going on with non-browning avocados? Yeah, you know, I think avocado is certainly something we, when I say we, is really um, our parent and Trexon has been looking at. The unfortunate part about avocado is it's very hard to work with. It's uh, hard to mm -hmm. tissue culture, propagate, and uh, regenerate and transform. Mm, yeah. And so, um, you know, I think that what, let's call avocado a work in progress. Mm. So that was, uh, that was a question from Dave, and we got a question from Mary. Uh, what's the best of the Arctic apple varieties you have? What's the best one for making pie? Oh, I think the golden for sure. You know, okay. sweet and tart. Well. You know, everybody's got their preferences. Mm. Um, but, <laughs> okay. uh, you know, I think my, uh, our family's been involved in the apple business. My extended family's been involved in the apple business a long time. And uh, we always thought that a, a good, well-ripened, picked off the tree golden is hard to beat mm -hmm. and makes the best pie. That's if you want a sweet Pie, apple pie. Mm -hmm. If you want a tart apple pie, well, then you have the granny. Mm, awesome. Well, thanks so much, Neil, for talking to me, and uh, best of luck with uh, uh, your expansive apple journey here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, thank you, Carl, for your yeah. interest. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.